All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, hope the audio is all right now. Okay. All right, so we were talking about non-negotiables, and um, even as you set your priorities, you have non-negotiables, and there will be challenges in the workplace. There will be small situations. There will be big situations. Uh, but during those times, draw your strength from the spiritual foundations that you have set before. Draw your strength from there. Refuse to uh, you know, bend on the principles that you have set on at the initial stages, right? OK, next point. Develop a life plan. Review it continuously. Proverbs 21 in verse 5. Anyone can read? Yeah. Careful planning puts you ahead in the long run. Hurry and scurry puts you further behind. Very important, right? Develop a life plan, review it continuously. Now, once we have a general sense of, OK, God is, this is my purpose in life. This is what God wants me to do. This is my non-negotiables that I am going to work on. Then you can sit down and write down or develop a life plan. Now, many of us may have already done it. Uh, many of us may be still working on it. And it doesn't matter how old we are, whether we are young, old, doesn't matter. We can keep reviewing it and changing it. I remember doing a work uh, or life plan when I was, I think, 22 years old. Right, uh, First time I did a life plan. A life plan was one page. Around 10 points. Over time, it changed, right? It, I built on it. And OK, so instead of this, let me put this. And so I made a life plan. Right? Uh, so what I also did was I divided that life plan maybe five years. And then I did one year. And then I did 10 years. Right? So many like that. But uh, this life plan can be, uh, you know, again, uh, one or two years, or it can be a high level plan. Right. Now, when I say for high level plan, it's uh, what you feel God wants you to do. So, for example, I remember writing down, I want to be a worship leader. I want to write songs. I want to release those songs. I remember writing it down when I was 22. Now, I knew probably six or seven chords on the guitar. I didn't know much, right? Uh, but I put that down. I said, one day, I want to preach in the church. I want to do uh, missions. I want to teach in the Bible college. So I put that all down. Uh, it's good to have that plan, because when you have a life plan, you are working towards something. Right? Uh, if, if you look at uh, an entrepreneur, even a person who wants to start a business, without a plan, he will not be able to do anything. Yes or no? Nobody is going to wake up and say, OK, I have a plan now. The lawyer is not going to come searching for you to start the trust. Right? You have to go. You have to get things done. Right? So when it comes to a high level plan, write down and also write down how you intend to get this, get to that place. Right? Otherwise, it becomes wishful thinking. You know what's wishful thinking? I wish I had this. I wish I had that. No. You write down. You know, God is big. God has big plans for us. Write down what you feel, right? But how, what are you going to do to see that plan fulfilled in your life? Write down that also, right? And then how you intend in getting there? It is a big picture of what you feel God is going to do with your life. The biggest, the big picture. And I remember writing down: by twenty-eight, I should be married. By thirty, I should have. By 35, I should have two children. I wrote down. Right? It sounded very silly, right? Because I was maybe 22, 23. But I wrote down. And I should be preaching. I should be teaching. I should be ministering. Uh, I should be able to teach these subjects. Uh, and how am I going to go about doing it? Number one, start praying more. Number two, read the Bible more. Three, do a lot of Bible studies. Meaning, sit. Spend time in God's word. Four, learn from your mistakes. Right? Five, don't be discouraged when people put you down. 
right? Six, uh, have walk in integrity, honesty, don't lie. Put it up, put on all of that. Keep reviewing it. Okay, so so five years down the line, at least once I should be able to lead worship in church. In the next five years, I should be able to lead worship in church. So what is that? Okay, go to your instrument, learn the songs, learn the listen to the songs, learn the songs, practice, audition. If you don't get through audition again, right? And then at least five years, I should be able to do this. How do you intend to get there? And also remember that uh, even as you do that, God will give you the wisdom. God will give you the grace. God will open doors for you. Right? Uh, don't worry if doors don't open in one year, two years. It's OK. Right? Give God the time. He knows when to open, what to open, and how to open doors. Right? Uh, even now, I was, I was sharing last week, sometimes you know, as pastors, we are so used to going on the pulpit and preaching and teaching and all that. But even now, sometimes, you know, but until I get to the stage, there's this nervous, oh, man. And, you know, my people who are around me, and, you know, they say, why? So many times you've gone on the stage, why? No, it's still there. But the moment I get the mic and start preaching, then it's gone. But I think Youth Missions was, I saw that, I said, God, please, Lord, the whole two days, I was like, God, please, you speak through me, you say, you know? Oh. It's 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 I mean it's it's not a fear that oh I don't want to go but it's just this feeling of okay and I'm doing I'm doing something which which I really want to do and I know that it's a it's a higher task it's a it's a big calling people are listening to God's word how much more how well I should be able to present the gospel or present the word to them these are young people right and I remember the moment I reach the stage that fear goes that's normal. But till then, I was like, I was panicking. I was not, not panicking, but I was going here. I was thinking. I was praying, and it's a natural thing, right? Uh, but remember that you will not have the details of all you have to do in life, but God will give you a sense of direction. Right? He'll just say, "No, you go here. You do this." Right now, this direction sometimes may not be aligned to your calling. It may be aligned to your calling. If it's aligned to your calling, beautiful. Right? You know, okay, God is leading me this way. If it's not aligned, stay faithful there. Say, okay, God, I'm going to do it, but I know that through this you may open a door for me. Right now, in drawing a life plan, three important key facets that you must remember right, and apply in your life. Number one, the person you believe you will become as you write down this life plan. So for example, if you're writing down this life plan for one year, in one year, what are the changes I want to see in my life? I'm not talking about only, it could be physical also, right? Exercise, be healthy, be strong, eat healthy, all of that. Spiritually, where do I see myself? Have I improved? in my teaching? Have I improved in my preaching? Or, or if you're working in the corporate sector, have I improved in what God's grace? Uh, it could be just you know uh, something that you're doing in the, in the computers, right? Uh, maybe back-end work on your computer. Have I improved in that? Have I, am I doing better? Am I able to uh, walk in love in the church office, in the, in, sorry, in the office? In, in church, it's easy to walk in love. But in office, it's really a different world altogether. Right. Uh, and the reason I'm saying this is because I've worked in the corporate sector. And now I've been working in the church. They, they're both an organization, but it's it's cruel sometimes. The world, the workplaces in, uh, you know, that, that are not led by good principles, it's, it's a cruel world. Many times my, bosses, my boss has come up to me and said, Paul, you have to do this. You have to do this for the team. You have to change this. Many times, many times my colleagues have come and said, hey, um, you know, uh, we'll all apply for sick leave so that he, you know, my team leader will, uh, you know, he'll learn a lesson because of what he did last week. So all of them applied. I didn't apply. And so in the whole team, there were 18 people, two of us came to the office. My boss asked, what is this? Why two of you all, you know, all of them apply for sick leave? Why didn't you apply? I said, I'm not sick. 
why would I apply for sick leave? And then, you know, so, so when you have certain these, these non-negotiables, you can write down the person that you want to be. You have a passion for teaching, you have a passion for music, for writing. I don't know what you want to do. Right? Develop that plan. Five years, ten years, review it. Right? And two, the place you believe that you should position yourself. Now, this place, uh, these could be geographic, professional, or society places. For example, if you are in the corporate sector, you feel that 10 years down the line, I should have, I should be working abroad in this country, for example, in America, I should be working in America, I should be able to land a good job, and I should be able to provide for my family. Three things, right? Nothing wrong, nothing wrong in writing down those plans, right? If you feel God is calling you to another country, write it down. Right? This is what I want to do. Or, or if it's professional, okay, right now I am a team leader. Five years down the line, I want to see myself as an assistant director of the company. Five years. Right? So I'm going to write it down. Right? The place, the, pos the place that God wants you to be. You write it down. Now, it's something that you feel, right? It's not necessarily that, you know, it has to be exactly that year or exactly what you write, something that you feel. You get what I'm saying, right? Three, the purpose that will be released through your life. So what is it that God wants to release through your life, right? Uh, so three things. Number one is the person that God wants you to be. Two, the place not only geographical, but also in, in terms of position, uh, where God wants you to be, and three, the purpose. So as you write down, you can divide your life plan into these three facets. The person, the place, and the purpose. Right. Okay. And look at the example of Abraham. It is perfect. Look at this example. Uh, I'll just read Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now this is God talking to Abraham. Look at the three things God has touched upon. Number one, the person. Initially, what was his name? Abram. That means father, the father of many, uh, father of many. Now, God is saying, I'm going to make you into a different person. Abraham, the father of many nations. So you see the person that God has making him to be to the place god tells him go from your father's house to a land i will show you and i will make you a great nation so you will not stay in this land that you're staying in right now abraham get up leave your fathers take your people take everyone and go to the land that i will show you so in abraham's case it was a physical geographical location now in in the case of you and me, it need not be a physical, geographical location. God may tell you, hey, leave this company that you're working in, and I have a different company. It may be in the same city, maybe in the same area itself. But join this company because I have something better for you here. Example, right? I'm just giving an example. So the place, right? Or God may say, you may say, uh, right now, I'm a team leader. Now, I'm, I'm going to be a manager in the next year. So, God, you're taking me from one place or one position to another position. Right? Three is the purpose. What does he say here? Why am I taking you to this nation? I will bless you. I will make you your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, 
and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. You see those three things? Person. No more Abram, but Abraham. Place. If you're stuck with your, in your parents' house, I can't do anything for you. You're going to remain there. So Abraham, get up, move out. I have a better place for you. You will inherit this land. Maybe it's an empty land, nothing is there. But I will take you to that land. Three, the purpose. Now God is not just saying you get up and go. He didn't say where to go, but he said what he's going to do to Abraham. You see that? He says the purpose, you will be a blessing to many nations. Through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Look at Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. See, Abraham didn't have all the details, yet he stepped out. Right? Imagine if Abraham said, no, but God, my parents are here. Who look after my parents? Or I have to, uh, everything is comfortable here. Why would I want to leave this place? And who's going to travel? You know, during those days, it was not like buying a ticket and just going. They had to take their, you know, wife and children and or livestock and all of them and travel. It's not an easy task. But Abraham did it. Right? So what is it that we can learn? When you and I are writing up this life plan that God has for us, be open to his leading. Right? He may lead us to a different place. He may make us a different person. He may choose to bless us in different ways. The way God uses you may not be the way God uses somebody else. The blessings may be different. The way that he chooses to use you may be different. Look at the life of Abraham and you compare the life of Daniel or you compare the life of Joseph. They all had different lives. Right? It was not the same. But they had a purpose. Right? They knew their purpose. Right? Daniel knew his purpose. He said early in his life, what does he say? I resolved in my heart that I will not eat of the king's temple. Daniel was probably 17, 18 years old, young boy. I, Daniel, I think Daniel's one chapter one was eight, I guess. It says Daniel resolved in his heart. He had decided. Can you imagine that 17, 18 years old, he's decided I will not eat of the king's table and defile myself because that food is offered to the idols of the Babylonians. I will not eat it. There was no, there was no way that Daniel could be, you know, uh, there was, it was a non-negotiable for Daniel. And so look at Joseph as well. Joseph's the same story. Potiphar's wife comes up to him and says, what does he say? Oh, he runs away. He says, lest I do something against God and my master. Now, in both cases, God was not, I mean, people were not around. Right? It was not like Daniel is 17 years old. His parents are saying, see, you should be very careful what they say. No, nobody is there. He's taken to a different country. He can do whatever he wants. He could have said, okay, I need two bites just to keep you happy. No. What about Joseph? Nobody was there. He says, okay, five minutes, no problem. But he ran away. So what do we learn from that? When you and I have non-negotiables, it helps us to write down our plans, our purposes, and, and God begins to enable us to fulfill it in our life. The moment we don't have these principles set in our life, we will be like a boat on the storm. Have you seen a boat on the storm? What, what's happening? Wherever the storm goes, the boat will go. Or wherever the wind comes, the boat, the boat will be moving towards that way. A storm on the sea. This rattling here and there. You and I have to have principles and I believe that you know when we look at what's happening around us many of uh, many of these 
ministries and ministry leaders and organizations fail. Why? Because lack of principle. Right? When and, and so it's very good at a young age itself. Put them down. Now you don't have to show everyone, okay, these are the principles I or these are the non-negotiables I have. Put them down. Write it down. Keep it in your Bible. Say, God, this is what I will work with. Wherever you take me, whether I'm in ministry or not in ministry, right? Meaning uh, full-time ministry. Uh, whatever it is, I will work with these principles. That is why in the beginning of the session I said, 20 years back, things have changed. Or 10 years back, things have changed. But these principles remain same throughout generation after generation. It doesn't change. I cannot say... Oh God, you know, uh, during those days, if you get uh, sexual immorality, was wrong. Now it's okay. Office, it's okay. Nobody knows. It's not a big deal. At home, the wife is there, but here it's okay. There's nothing wrong in that. That is all 10 years, 20 years back. That's the old mindset. It's not an old mindset, it's principles. Right? Or before, money laundering and bribery. Oh, it was very bad. Don't do it. But now it's common. Say, okay, God, it's okay. It's, it's just once a year bribe. It's fine. No. Those principles remain the same. They transcend time. They transcend ages. Right? So you and I must have principles. So here's what I want you to do. Right. Many of us may have already done it. Right. I'm not going to ask you to write down a life plan, but I just want you to maybe take some time during this week and write down certain principles you feel you want to, you know, learn or want to develop. And maybe two or three, whatever you feel like. And also write down principle, new principles or uh, you know, new things that you want to develop in your life. One may be things that you're already working on, but you need to grow in that. Also write down new principles or non-negotiables that you will stand by. Excuse me. Right, non-negotiables. So you write it down. Right, or you can put it on your laptop as well. Uh, I don't maybe three or four non-negotiables. Lord, as long as I'm a student in this Bible college, these are so three non-negotiables for me. Right? Or as long as I am uh, you know, uh, going to work in, or, or for my family, these are three non-negotiables. And help me to stand by it. So I want you to do that. Right? Write it down. Pray, prayerfully write it down. And you say, God, this is what I want. And what you're doing is you're building a strong foundation. That, you know, even as you graduate and whatever God's called you to do, you know, starting a ministry, I think most of you are going back to help your parents in the ministry. You'll have non negotiables, you'll have principles set. Now, this something may have been happening in church past 10 years, don't worry. When you have your principles right, people will watch it. People will learn it. People will see it. And then they may say, hey, but you know, last 10 years we did it this way. Who are you to come and say, you're so small, you're so young. Don't worry about that. Principles transcend age and time. When you hold on to it, God will give the favor. Right? God will give you the favor. God will bring in people into your life. You know, I always I always think of this in Manglo. I was very young. You know what? I was... Uh, 25, 26, and these and they were all senior citizens in the church. Yet they, 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 you know, they, they, they always were there for us. They say, no, no, we, we are there. We'll come. We'll be available uh, because they were because they knew if nobody comes, it will still be there. Remember, I told you about the Wednesday prayers. Uh, Wednesday Bible study. So whether you come or no, it's there. Right? Now they knew it. So nobody's calling and asking, do we have prayer on Wednesday? No, it's, it's, it's there. It's already set. Right? So over time, the church people knew 
whether I'm there or not there, by the of church will be open on Wednesday. Right? For prayer. So it's my responsibility to go for the Bible study. So what started with one or two people, eventually it grew. Many people came. Right? Now, why did they come? It was not because I was doing some great eschatology and uh, uh, Daniel and all of that. No, I was doing Who We Are in Christ. Okay, simple books. But they came because they, they saw that, hey, there are certain principles here. Right? Uh, it was not like a big teaching and all. No, it was very simple stuff. Right? So principles. And over time, people noticed, oh, whether we are there or no, 8 a.m. prayer starts. So then the church got to know, <clears throat> people got to know, right? If 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 it's 8 a.m. church, if I'm not there also, church is there. 8 a.m. they go, the prayer has started. So they was, you know, some of them came because they felt pity. So sad. <laughs> Nobody's there for prayer. But over time, many of them started coming. Right? Why? Principles. I remember the first time I went to Mangalore, they said, nobody come will come to church early in Mangalore. They came and told me that nobody will come to 8 o'clock is if 8 30 you start worship, we'll come only at 8 45. I said, I remember telling this um, church member, I said, I think it's time we change that. No, it's not a good principle to have, it's not a good thing. We shouldn't boast about it, it's a, it's a bad thing. We need to correct ourselves for that. Um, and you know, they were quite surprised, but that's the truth. And when you stand on principles, you will see that God begins to. Work in your life. So that's what I want you to do. Write down principles that you will stand by. Can we do that? Right? Maybe even if it's one, it's all right. How do you write it down? It could be as simple as okay, I'm going to read my the Bible for 10 minutes every day, or I'm going to listen to a podcast uh, every day, or I'm going to listen to two songs every day, two gospel songs. Right? Or this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to save up certain amount for my future or for the ministry, whatever it is, write them down. Keep it ready. Right? So we'll stop here. Uh, what we'll do is we'll pick up from next class. Next class, we'll look into uh, the career plan because I don't want to start it and stop in between. Uh, may not have time to complete this entire chapter. So we'll stop here and we'll pick up from next class on career plan. So now that in this chapter, we have Establish the fact, number one, God has a plan. Number two, we need to have priorities, non-negotiables in our lives. Three, we need to develop a life plan and work towards it. Now, once this is done, this is like the foundation. Now, from chapter two, we'll talk about career. Right now, when when we go into this chapter next class, I just I'll just set the stage so that next class we will uh, we'll understand where we are going to. Uh, now, a, a career plan is basically what I want to do in my life. Right now, now it's not like uh, you know I want to. Uh, it's not like these life goals that we write always. Right, uh, New Year resolutions. It's not that career. A, 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 a place where where I be going to work, and this work is going to pay me, and I'm going to spend most of my time uh, doing this job, right? Whatever that career is. So we'll talk about career plan. How to find out what is my career? What is it that God is calling me for? And even as you plan out, how God can transition us from one career to another, or sometimes He may just keep us in that same position always, right? meaning in that same career always. So we'll learn more about that from next class. Right? Okay, let's just uh, close in prayer. Any questions, those who are online? Okay. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day, God. We thank you for this new year especially. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness over the year of 2023, through every season, through every challenge, through the good times and the difficult times, Lord. You have been so faithful. And Lord, even as we enter this new semester, spring 24, oh God, we, we pray, God, that you will continue to speak to us, 
speak in us lord that your word will bear fruit in our lives that we will learn that we will open our hearts we will open our minds that our, that everything that we learn throughout the semester lord it will it will be deep rooted into our hearts into our spirit and we pray god that that everything that we learn lord will give you glory and honor that you will use us greatly for your kingdom and for your purposes oh god we thank you lord we just submit this entire semester this entire year into your hands lord may your name be glorified in and through our lives in jesus name we pray Amen. 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 God bless you all. I'll see you next Monday.